what do you think when you pass a guinea pig or a hamster in a cage? I think it reflects my own life to me. I sometimes feel like a guinea pig and a hamster in a cage because I go from an office to a car, to my house, to a shop, to a cafe, to the gym. I'm always boxed in. And I wanted to do something about this. I really felt like I'm missing out on a connection to the world around me. So over the last few months, I've been taking public transport a lot more, especially on the days when the pollution is less. I've also been going for longer walks with my dogs. And um, interestingly, last week as I was walking my dog, and uh, there's a bit of a narrow passageway in the park in my society where we are boxed in by two hedges on both sides. And as I'm walking my dog, she decides, okay, this is the exact same spot where I want to release last night's chicken nuggets. So she stops and I have to stop to clean it up. And a gentleman standing right behind us has no choice also but to stop. And he was very nice about it. But he continued talking on the phone as he waited for us to finish and he was talking to someone and uh, he kept on saying, I have walked for 10 minutes extra today. And he kept on and on emphasizing on that word 10 as if it was some humongous thing, you know, tremendous achievement for having moved my legs for 10 minutes more when they were clearly designed by God to help me sit on a recliner and watch cricket. So that's what he kept doing. And then I was done. And as I was just leaving, he was still arguing with the person on the phone. Um, and the last thing I heard him say, and he said this in Hindi, but I'll translate it. He said very indignantly, you know, as if someone's hurt his pride massively. He said, I am not fat. Okay. Only my liver is fat. <laughs> this is Sonali Acharji. And you are listening to Health Wealth a podcast that brings to you a variety of guests who have accumulated significant knowledge and experiences about human health. And the idea is at the end of this discussion, we hope that you will feel a little bit wiser and not WhatsApp wiser, but factually wiser and a little bit more motivated to make the right choices for your well-being. This episode is actually a culmination of four unanswered questions that I've had over the last few months. Um, and the first one happened while I was grating a chunk of butter. Um, when I realized when you grate butter and you put them into your cakes, they just come out really well. So I was grating butter and as I'm grating it, I'm looking down and it's very icky, you know, when fat starts melting and, you know, getting all very, it's just a very icky thing. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, so this is the fat of a cow. Is this what my fat looks like? And I have a friend who's a doctor and he's very used to, you know, the workings of my mind. And so I rung up and I said, is cow fat the same as human fat? And uh, he said, no, go away. And so that question was unanswered. Then the second thing that happened was I was wondering what happens to fat inside my body. Because, you know, when, when we fry fat, they start cooking things, Right. So I was just wondering that if I have fever or if I'm in a sauna and my fat is overheated, does it start cooking? Is that what they call inflammation? Don't have an answer to that either. And then the third thing that happened is the one organ which people continuously associate with fat today, and this happens all around me, is the liver. Because everyone seems to have fatly, fatty liver and no one is really tremendously worried about it. It seems like it's okay, you know, it's reversible. So, you know, Christmas ke baad, I'll reverse it. Nothing will go wrong. Or no, actually not Christmas. Let that wedding go over, then I'll do it. Or next year for New Year's, that's my resolution. I'll get rid of it, it'll be fine. And I kept thinking that in that period, that one year or two years that one is taking to reverse fatty liver, is there no damage done? Like, is that it? One day fatty liver, next day all fine? Like... What's the deal about that? And the fourth question is very, very embarrassing, but I will share it. Uh, so I was sitting with a doctor and she was saying, um, everyone's talking about gut health for digestion, but no one's talking about the liver. 
And I said, of course, pretending like I knew what the liver does for digestion, because really I don't. I do know it's a very important organ because it's there on all the preventive health packages and even the basic ones have liver tests. So, I mean, it has to be important if it's on the package. But if you ask me to explain it to you, I really don't know. I know it has something to do with digestion, but that's about it. So I went online because that's what you do when you're confused. And I said, okay, the first thing to look for is what do you call a liver doctor? Because, you know, if you want to learn about a liver, you need to know who the specialist is. And it's a hepatologist. And the first name that was suggested to me is the person who's joining us today. And I'm extremely excited to have him because Dr. S.K. Sareen is the director of the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences in Delhi. But he's also the author of this excellent book called Own Your Body, uh, Doctor's Life-Saving Tips. And I have read it over and over again because it's so unlike any other health book. It really teaches you how you can be the first point of contact for your well-being. And that's it's so important for someone like me who really wants to take care of herself. So, hi. Hello, sir. Thank you so much for coming today. You speak so nice. And so I should not probably, uh, if not misunderstood, childlike simplicity. So <laughs> that's really good. I'm very happy for your kind invitation. And Thank you. Uh, I also see your four questions. You've already posed the main threads, but thank you for inviting me. Thank you, sir. I do like the simplicity of understanding health, you know, instead of going straight to the problem to actually understand the components of the problem. So if you could just maybe start by just telling me a little bit about what is human fat? What is it? Yeah, human, human fat? Yes. <laughs> is it the same as the fat we use in cooking? Uh, well, the fat in cooking is all triglycerides, generally. That's a different uh, composition. But human fat is uh, something, uh, you know, let's put it in very simple terms. There is a white fat and there is a brown fat. White fat is the one which you store for being used in future. We jada hamare paas. पैसा है तो थोड़ा बैंक में रख दें तो वो बैंक हमारा एडिपोस टिश्यू दैट इज योर टिश्यू व्हिच इज स्टोर्स एंड दैट्स द वाइट फैट इट्स नॉट बैड एवरी वाइट फैट इज नॉट बैड इट इज योर यू नो रिजर्व एंड यू कैन यूज इट बट सपोज यू गो आउट फॉर पार्टीज फॉर थ्री कंसेक्यूटिव डेज एंड यू गेन 1 केजी वेट व्हिच इज नॉट गुड एंड दिस एक्सपेंसिव थोड़ा बैंक में आपका ज्यादा पैसा है बट ज्यादा ठूस दो गया इफ यू पुट टू मच ऑफ दैट इन इट देन इट बिकम्स ओवर वाइट फैट एंड द ब्राउन फैट दैट यू हैव अराउंड द शोल्डर्स एंड अदर एरियाज इज अ गुड फैट इफ यू बर्न दैट ब्राउन फैट इट डिक्रीजेज योर वेट बट वाइट फैट इज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ योर एक्स्ट्रा यू नो कैलोरीज दैट यू हैव सो वॉट यू कुक इज डिफरेंट then what you have in your body your body is fat is quite different and it is stored in different cells you you were saying this about calories right now and that 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 was something i've always wondered like what creates fat in our bodies like do we have to eat fat to gain fat or can we eat you know anything and it creates fat very good question so let's say you take more of carbohydrates मैंने खूब सारी मिठाई खा ली चॉकलेट्स खा ली आई नो यू लाइक इट चॉकलेट्स खा ली मिठाई फ्रुक्टोज हनी ऑल कैलोरीज आर इफ नॉट यूज देन एंड देयर विल बी चेंज इन द लिवर टू फैट दिस इज एक्चुअली लिपिड एज ए स्टोर सो कार्बोहाइड्रेट विल बी टेकन इन टू फैट आपने खूब सारा कोला पिया या खूब सारे फ्रूट जूसेस लिए कैंड वाले ऑल ऑफ दीज आर कैरिंग लॉट ऑफ कॉर्न सरेपली दे ऑल विल कन्वर्ट टुमारो और इवन देन एंड देयर इनटू बाय द लिवर इनटू लिपिड्स एंड दिस इज लाइपोटॉक्सिसिटी सो लिवर विल हैंडल अप टू सम टाइम एंड इट टू योर एडिपोस टिश्यू योर फैट टिश्यू बट टू अ लिमिट 
so you don't have to eat fat to become fat actually mm -hmm. it is more carbs that create problems than the fat by itself yeah and the other thing about fat is see to a non medical person fat we see it in a very cosmetic sense right fat is the thing that sort of stops you from getting into the genes but i was very curious that what is fat to us internally what does it do when it's inside when the white fat is too much of it inside how does it harm me or is it of benefit to me uh i am happy that you say if you're being fat it prevents you from going into genes so i will tell you what i'm very fond of fit into genes don't fit genes onto you if you are fat just putting extra size ex uh, oversized genes is not a great idea become good so that you fit into the genes properly and for the, that uh, a simple formula of waist to hip ratio it should be 0.7 for females you know genes jahan aap bandhte hain ye button up for a female it should be let's say for a hip of 40 your waist can be 28 inches not more if you have more means the belly has fat which is white fat not a good fat and uh, it should be less for a man it is 0.9 for a hip of 40 your waist can be at the most 36 or in other terms when you go to buy your jeans for a female it should be 80 and for a man 90 cm so if you are above that don't buy jeans and don't waste money first get into shape to get into the jeans and now uh, this fat is probably a result partly of your food the simple rule is calorie in calorie out is balanced but if you have jeans which are bad then calorie in should be less calorie out should be more all your life if you have like a you know handicapped mm -hmm. car or manufacturer defect then you have to drive your body your car your engine more carefully yeah and while i am fat you know while i can't fit into my jeans very often doctors say that fat inflames your body it's inflammatory uh could you explain what that means i mean what what is this inflammation inside you know every fat person is not bad mm -hmm. you know and every is not healthy so a fat person sometimes can have good genes and still be all right but fat is a state of overall inflammation it is a low grade inflammation in the body you know it's like a is a bag which is packed over stuffed so over stuffed is always a stretched kind of a feeling so if you have have a stretched feeling you will be uh, not in a good shape and uh, i would say inflammation is measured by two or three things one how much insulin are you using so overweight people obese people those who have fatty liver generally have a extra insulin requirement to burn calories and number 2 you have some tnf alpha remember this tumor necrosis factor alpha this is a marker of inflammation so tnf alpha levels are high and tnf alpha is one of those which changes your tissues to develop tumors so if you have constant stimulus to make tnf alpha tumor necrosis factor or more need of insulin then you are not in a good shape so less insulin lower tnf alpha healthier you are you got it yes i got it these are two simple blood tests yes and your appearance you know you can say oh i am fat and which you are not I am yeah. fat means you have these factors high. So if you are low in your right. weight, less in fat, you should be okay. Yeah, and 
Um, you know, this is just a very funny question, but sometimes when you see um, doctors on TV serials operating and they cut through, you know, the surgeries, they cut through fat and, you know, they pick up these heavy bulks of human fat. I've always wanted to ask a surgeon this, that does fat make it difficult to operate on a person? Like, do you see a fat person and then like worry that it's going to be difficult to surgically operate? It's not really. Surgeons are very accomplished craftsmen. They can handle all kinds of tissues and all kinds of patients. I don't think it is. But yes, the recovery. Yeah. Surgery is one part. And I'm sure we can handle all kinds of patients. But the body does not repair itself as well when such a person is operated because of its inherent you know, somewhat low resistance. The infections can be higher. The stitching or it may take longer. Complications don't occur more, but one needs to be careful that am I a fit person to undergo? It's like somebody is running who is fat and somebody is running who is thin. Who reaches the destination faster? Generally, the one who is lean and thin. So similarly, the destination for surgery is a complete cure or recovery. It's not just the starting of the process. Right. So everyone who is overweight, suppose you have to undergo for surgery, take it as a challenge, lose 5 kg at least, and then go for surgery. What do you mm. think? Yeah, that makes so sense. Yeah. You flip it as a dental, lose weight, and then go yeah. to the... Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, when, when it comes to fat deposits, and the reason I wanted to discuss fat was because eventually I'd like to talk about the fatty liver disease that's getting around in India. But um, before we get to that, can you tell us, you know, you've dealt with this organ for decades now, but can you tell us what is the liver and why is it such a significant organ? The liver is the main metabolic factory. Say you eat, it goes into the intestine. And then from intestine, whatever you have eaten, good or bad, you know, good or bad, samosa kha liye, aapne drinks le liye, aapne pakode kha liye, aur dusre zaraf kisne achha khana kha liye, whatever good and bad, the intestines will absorb and then send it to the liver. So the blood from intestine has to go to the liver. And now liver has to handle all kinds of terrorists or Buddhists or all kinds of food that you have eaten. The liver is therefore the first organ. It is the largest immune gland of your body. If you are kind of thinking only lymph nodes are my gland and or axilla, I have my glands. No, the first gland is the liver. And if you think that it is the largest immune organ, it has to be strong. It must be able to tolerate all good and bad. But sometimes if you insult it too much, it will not tolerate. It will revolt. And its normal functions are that it provides you immunity, it provides you good health, and also... Uh, kind of absorbs iron, absorbs fat. But more important than that, it controls your blood sugar, it controls cholesterol, triglycerides. So the body's regulation, it actually forms cholesterol. What you eat is processed and now it is converted to cholesterol or fats in the liver. The extra sugar converted to fat converted to cholesterol. So liver says to see that the nutrients are not wasted, they are preserved, they are restored for times of need. But it also tries to neutralize the injuries. You pick on, take on taking pills, little bit of fever and you just take pills. And that's not a great idea. Or some people enjoy having drinks and their liver has to handle it. So liver handles your good and bad, but it also has a juice called bile or pith. So liver releases its messages through bile to the intestine 
and then it absorbs the bile back. So there is a loop. You eat, it goes to liver, and then it goes into bile or pit. The pit goes into the intestine. It tells you what to do, what not to do, how to absorb, what to absorb. Then the bile is taken back into the liver. So this is a separate circulation. Then your blood, you have one blood circulation which heart controls and this circulation is controlled by liver. So liver is your master regulator of food, energy, youth, your vitality, reality, and of course the liver and gut function, liver and brain function, and it also regulates your sugar. So your development of fatty liver is a, it predates development of diabetes and many, many. many. So remember, jigger, aapka sabse important organ hai. Jigger, aapka boss hai. Not this, yeah. it always can change based on your vision, kya dikha, mm -hmm. kaun dikha, kaisa dikha. Your mind changes. Liver doesn't change. It's a sturdy organ. Holds mm. but to a level. And at what point um, does somebody get classified as having um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Like how much fat needs to be there before um, you say that this person is suffering from this condition? Well, I'm very impressed with the use of this technical term by you. So let me break the term non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So it means there are two types, alcohol and fatty liver. Sharaab peene walo ga bhe fatty liver ho ga. Aur nahi sharaab peene non-alcoholic phir bhe fatty liver ho ga. So kya do common cause ho ga fatty liver ki alcohol and other things. Achha suppose dono kathe ho jayen. Somebody has alcohol and also already has fatty liver. So, guy comes. Now, the non-alcoholic fatty liver is a term which was given that a person can have same kind of liver injury, same kind of bad effects just because of fat. And this fat in the liver disturbs the body's function, body's immunity, your age, and it rever uh, it changes the lifespan. For example, if you have fatty liver, I'll very broadly and importantly tell you now and we can discuss it. Yes. Person with a fatty liver has cardiac events. 15% of the people with fatty liver every year will have what we call MACE, major adverse cardiac events means heart attack blood pressure and its complications so those who have fatty liver 15 percent can have uh, cardiac events they can have other events which are like development of cancers and tumors so fatty liver is not a good idea and it is important to know without alcohol you get all what people who drink get it. And, you know, I, I don't need to ask this because um, I think all diseases, the incidences just seem to be going up, especially non-communicable diseases. But um, just, you know, just for the listener's benefit, have the incidences of NAFLD gone up in India? Uh, incidence of? NAFLD or fatty ah, liver disease. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, NAFLD. You are a doctor. <laughs> You're using the term NAFLD. I'm so happy. I well, do my research. Only know about yes. the worry when they have diarrhea, pain abdomen, fever, or some you know roadside accident or some sudden cardiac event. Liver is a silent organ. It doesn't make noise. But it is the one which controls other events. So remember, infectious diseases are attractive. People notice them and they go to the you know physician and get treatment. Cough, cold, fever, 
फीवर है ना बॉडी एक्स रैशेस डायरिया और यू नो सडन ट्रॉमा बट नॉन एल्कोहलिक फैटी लिवर डिजीज means if you have fatty liver let's use this simple term fatty liver and if somebody has it it has huge consequences i can just tell you a very recent study published today i just gleaned through it that how much should a baby of 3 or 4 years should do exercise 3 years or 4 years can you make a wild guess mm. the baby in one baby. should have 3 hours of exercise, exercise. 180 minutes for a baby of 3 to 4 these are who recommendations it's not mine and how much on an average a baby in the 33 countries survey published in jama 33 countries including us and others a 3 or 4 year old baby only african babies do 23% uh, while the north americans and others are just close to 7 to 10% of the babies i have yeah. no idea about indian so the relevance of having a fatty liver and these children when they grow up they are not so well adolescent obesity is a major major problem all over the world so coming back to the fatty liver is it increasing yes if your baby is not taught or is not made to do that much of all the time the baby is in the lap or baby is you know on the trolley i mean stroller or whatever you call and the mother is not aware of it so how do you make mothers aware you know mother is the best doctor the family a good family should never visit a doctor mother is the doctor at home mother has to doctor so if you take that a uh, very important message uh, you know can i take a little more time and give of you course. some good idea yes suppose you yes. as a food uh, foodie want to make a very good soup so you will see everything is measured its temperature is well controlled and you will prepare the first rate soup and you would like to serve that to your uh, friends and uh, guests would you serve a second rate soup to them where it is half cooked or the broth is not good no never mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so why can't the parents the mother and the father both think that the child who is going to be born should be a first rate healthy child i'm not actually comparing with soup but the idea just came to me that the mother father should give the best recipe for the perfect child and then that recipe is followed for next 10 or 15 years so the recipe comes from the father and mother who are aware that they only have a child when they are perfectly healthy it's not a second rate i shouldn't say second rate but you know the child is not as healthy as the child should be aur usko aap 15 saal 10 saal tak theek rakho ab aap for example acha bachcha to ho gaya ab kuch nahi bahut sare listeners aise honge who have kids of 2 years or 3 years but just think of you are living in a city where pollution is more delhi mein reh rahe hain bombay mein reh rahe hain there is too much pollution and you want to move on. but a child who is living in a house for 10 years under the parents mother and father who are not aware or not bothered what the child should eat is the child not polluted yeah is the child not getting what he is not should not get so the 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 responsibility of providing clean air good food good exercise good lifestyle to a child before birth after birth is whose mother and of course the whole family why i am telling you this because you said the incidence or the prevalence mm. of this fatty liver is increasing yes because Parenthood is outsourced. 
स्कूल में सिखा देंगे वो पेरेंट टीचर मीटिंग में हम लोग बात कर लेंगे आई मीन दैट इज वॉट इट इज एंड समटाइम्स यू यूज योर इन्फ्लुएंस दैट दिस चाइल्ड डज नॉट गो फॉर एक्सरसाइज और पी टी क्लासेस यू शुड इफ यू आर ए गुड पेरेंट से to the principal yeah. double the pt time because we don't have space in our house make the child do the exercise in the school yeah what do you no i always think that somewhere with the advent of technology and our lifestyles today the idea of survival has changed right there was a time we had to move to get our food and that's how you survived today survival is going to a good school getting the best dress um looking good uh speaking well so in a lot of parents heads they are doing the best it's just that we've somewhere that mindfulness of health has just gone away it's just been health doesn't matter for survival where is it with a huge irony for me but the more i meet people the more i realize that survival for them is to get enough instagram likes or because that will ensure you know you get a promotion or a raise or you know that is survival today um to reconnect to our health i mean like you said liver is such a silent organ who is going to drink you know beer after a stressful week and think you know i'm harming my liver my liver is screaming right now we're not connected to our organs the way we should be and i think that does contribute a lot towards it um but having said that now supposing i have fatty liver what can doctors do for me well uh how do you know you have fatty liver <laughs> somebody has the, all all the tests have it Fat, liver function test is there in every package now but liver function test will not tell you it doesn't how 20% of the people with grade 2 or 3 fatty liver would have raised or deranged blood test oh i thought the blood test tells you no no way how no. do you get to know then that this is ah, so interesting let's, yeah let's first know how to get the fatty liver detected so uh self test matlab apne aap you become a doctor now and then you should thank me that i have told you and saved you money Yeah. all of you save the money so these are this who has fatty liver number 1 those who are overweight or obese meaning thereby your height minus 100 if you are 170 and a male you should weigh 70 or less height minus 100 but if your parents had diabetes blood pressure disease cancers kidney disease anything liver disease then height minus 105 ab aap jaldi se jor laga lijiye so is your weight more or less if you are overweight according to this yeah. you have fatty liver oh. for a female it is always height minus 105 sorry slight discrimination <laughs> but if you are 160 cm your weight is close to 55 but if your parents have all those you know kind of diabetes blood pressure or metabolic problems then 110 so 160 should be 50 kg and around that if you are above that i'm not saying it is bad but then you should get for fatty liver check so that is number 1 if you are already diabetic you have fatty liver nearly all diabetics have fatty liver three if you have high cholesterol or triglyceride you go for a blood test usne bataya ji aapka cholesterol to zyada hai triglyceride aapka zyada hai to kahan se aaya all liver has produced and secreted these proteins or these fat elements into the blood so all those who have high lipids have fatty liver fourth those people who have got waist and hip because fat to wahi hai zyada your waist hip ratio for a female of 0.7 and for a male of 0.9 you probably have bad fat and a fatty liver and of course 
इफ यू योर सेल्फ आर हाइपर टेंसिव पच्चीस साल का है बीपी हो गया समझ नहीं आया क्यों हुआ अरे भाई एक बार चेक कराओ लिवर में फैट है हाइपर टेंशन डायबिटीज हाई कोलेस्ट्रॉल ट्राइग्लिसराइड्स एंड दो समाइम्स है फैटी लिवर दीज आर सेल्फ टेस्ट किसी को दिखाने की जरूरत फिर आपका अगर शुगर ज्यादा है ब्लड शुगर तो भी नॉट डायबिटीज भी डायबिटिक्स ऑल है विद दीज थिंग्स इन माइंड यू डायग्नोज योर सेल्फ योर पेरेंट्स हैड समथिंग रॉन्ग नॉट रॉन्ग समथिंग लाइक दिस मेटाबॉलिक डिसफंक्शन और यू योर सेल्फ है देन स्क्रीन योर सेल्फ ऑफ फैटी लिवर अब पता लगा कैसे स्क्रीन करें थ्री मेथड्स ऑफ स्क्रीनिंग वन इज एन अल्ट्रासाउंड अल्ट्रासाउंड ऑफ दबडोम विल टेल यू थर्टी टू फोर्टी परसेंट पिकअप रेट नॉट मोर बिकॉज ओनली एडवांस ग्रेड टू ग्रेड थ्री फैटी लिवर जनरली स्पिक्ड वेल बाय अल्ट्रासाउंड एंड इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द on the expertise of the person what he is looking for number 2 you can get a blood sugar level which if it is above 100 should make you worry fasting blood sugar three if you have high cholesterol or lipids worry and a simple liver test called sgpt or alt if it is high you have not only fatty liver but probably injury due to fatty liver sgpt can be high due to many things but if it is high then there is an injury and liver is you know somewhat damaging damaged yeah. and lastly there are two new tests one is a assessment elastography uh, where you put sound waves into the liver and it comes back this is used by test called fibro scan fibro touch many machines are there so the sound wave is somewhat attenuated it is dampened by the fat and we measure it as controlled attenuation parameter called cap so normally a liver should have less than 220 as a value if it is about 250 you already have fat so the fibro scan will give you almost 70% accuracy but still it is not enough then more advanced where you are very sure you want to be you can do an mri or you can do a ct scan which can pick up more but for a common person diagnosis is by blood 20 30% then ultrasound 30 40% and then by fibro scan or fibro touch to pick up your fat content so are you wiser now yes much wiser and very motivated so yes first the self test yes then you go to quantify the amount of fat mm-hmm. and more than 5% fat in the liver more than 5% is not healthy and most machines pick up when the fat is 20 to 30% so therefore all estimates today are underestimating fatty liver your mm-hmm. self is the best test yes and so you know very often uh, most of us seem to have reversible fatty liver and you know exercise diet you lose the weight your liver becomes better but in that time that it's taking because you know god made fat in a way that it takes forever to burn but uh, fat is difficult to lose so in that time it takes me to lose weight is it harming me or will i just be fine as reversible fatty liver nothing to worry about see you started by saying that people think oh i have fat but after mm-hmm. this wedding after christmas in new year new I'm years a... new years is the favorite new year se pakka resolve resolution pakka weight kam karke fat kam kar lunga yeah. but tell me if you have a flat tire or your engine is making noise will you wait till christmas or you get it fixed today so please think that fire in the fat in the liver is a fire alarm and don't wait for any day of your choice yes i'm not saying suddenly you can reverse it but yes you can start your there is murphy's law you know the famous murphy's law yes everything good in life is sweet 
इमोरल और फैटनिंग सो द टंग इज समाइम्स uh the major player and you keep doing it but if you want to see that you want to add life and healthy life to yourself and enjoy every day of your life don't wait for christmas or new year and reduction in fat is possible it is achievable it is enjoyable and of course it is exemplary for a look angare yaar tumhara क्या हुआ तुम दस साल छोटे लग रहे हो यार तुम्हारे कपड़े भी अब अच्छे लग रहे हैं यू आर लुकिंग मोर यू आर नॉट ब्यूटीफुल और मोर हैंडसम और व्हाट एवर व्हाट हैव यू डन टू योरसेल्फ एंड देन यू से ओह आई डिड दिस आई एम लाइक दिस सो व्हाई डोंट यू टेक दैट प्राइड इन मेकिंग योर बॉडी यू नो मोर हेल्दी एंड सो एंड इट इज रिवर्सिबल बट वंस इज कारिंग अकर्स सपोज योर फैटी लिवर normally we divide it into grade 1 which is less than 30% of fat grade 2 where you have 30 to 60% of fat and more than 60% is grade 3 so let's say your fibro scan or fibro touch shows you uh the value instead of 220 350 370 oh is grade 3 fat it means if you section the liver majority of the liver cells are full of fat that's not healthy at all these people the body will think ki yaar ye cells to itne fat wale hain they are not good for us so the body is pulls the immune cells will kill them and then you get scars then you get fibrosis then you get cirrhosis of liver and fibrosis of liver will impact all organs if liver has fibrosis your heart has fibrosis your kidney may have fibrosis all other organs are equally unhealthy so a simple fibro scan or a fibro touch will in one minute tell you where your stiffness of the liver is uh, some blood test can also tell you so please remember assess the fat and the bad effects of fat like fibrosis scarring cirrhosis of the liver if you have reached the cirrhosis even then you can reverse to a large extent by weight loss and by changing lifestyle but if you have fatty liver grade 1 or grade 2 sure enough your will power your determination and your way of change life will give you take you to healthy life yeah sir i wanted to just briefly talk about your book before we end this um in own yeah. your health um unfortunately i didn't bring my copy today but um what what really stayed with me there yeah, that's the book okay. own okay. your body and put the face on it and my face <laughs> <laughs> just to make it a light <laughs> conversation it is um I really like the fact that you make people responsible for themselves because there is no distinguishing between you and your health your health is you um and I like that but I was just curious that over the years you as a doctor how have you owned your health Ah oh, that's a good question but first let me tell you why this title own your body a doctor's life saving tips was given it is with uh, intense desire to change the current way people are living and hopefully the new generation that is produced you can't have somewhat unhealthy children and then more unhealthy children this is like a walking gene theory and uh, like today morning i saw someone and the lady is 30, 38 years old and she had her surgery in 2007 for gallbladder stones and she came with high cholesterol and lean and thin lady not overweight and i said did your mother have gallstone oh no no she just got it last year so the fact is the mother had the genes mother probably is 60 62 and she got her gallbladder surgery at 
the daughter at the age of uh, 2007, maybe uh, when she was just about 20. So now the question is, what will happen to her child? Her child or children will have probably gallbladder stone or similar illnesses when they are 10 or 12. So the main message in the book is, if you are a defective piece, defective in the manufacturing gene, yes. then you should be more careful not to produce defective pieces. And remember, you own the responsibility. So the main message in the book was on uh, being aware. Uh, one of the commandments on page 290, and I really feel strongly about it, the first commandment is on make your you know, family history, the way the genes have come. Mother had BP, mother had diabetes, father had heart problem, father had cancer, grandfather had this, grandmother had this from my side, my wife's side, what is the history? Now, me and my wife, we have kids, what will they have? They will be produced as the good and bad from the parents. So this is one message that make your family tree. Don't think ki mujhe gaadi mili, mujhe makhan mila, mujhe health ke liye, achhi cheeze kya mili? Shakir, jaysay for you, good face, good looks, good hair, all that. But, some, you know, it's a package, life is a package, kuch mm -hmm. garbar bhi. So, ek wo cheez, bahut zaruri dhyan rahi. Now, another message which I would like is, you know, jitna jaldi invest kar lete hai na, utni jada. For example, there is a blue chip company. Mm -hmm. What will you do? Buy the shares in the very beginning. After 10 years, you will have more money. Am I right? Blue chip yeah. company. So for you, the blue chip company is your bones. Blue and bone, please remember. If you make your bones strong in the first 10 years of your life, by running, by climbing, by swimming or whatever, you actually reap the benefits for the rest of your life. So the bones start decaying or becoming weak at the age of 29 onwards, 30 onwards. So parents, all of us should make our children to have strong bones, whichever method it is, and maintain the youth of the bones. It's a big endocrine organ. And that, if remembered, the exercise, the lifestyle and health uh, will make a difference. Now coming to me, uh, you asked this, how I maintained. I think I was very lucky to have parents with no illnesses. Absolutely no illnesses. So I could have good genes. And also my parents ensure that I behave. You know, behave means I have to do my daily routine, dincharya in a manner which was uh, quite healthy, helpful. So I was privileged to have, and I wish, let's say out of 100 people, if 20, 30 are like that, they should maintain, they should thank their parents and maintain themselves in the green lane, you know, and it's good. by some chance that you had parents who had illnesses, well, try and correct them so that your grandchildren at least will thank you. Yeah, my parents were very wise. You know, they were unhealthy, but now they look quite healthy. Yeah. No, I, I thought this was such a radical approach towards uh, procreation because it's something I've always thought about. I've always thought that why would I want to um, inflict this kind of uh, suffering and poor quality life onto another soul? Um, so it, it's great to have a doctor say that. And everything you said today was so relevant and so interesting. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tanali. I hope your thank podcast you makes a change in the way people think about themselves. They yes. own their body and going to doctor should be an exception yes. rather than a first choice. And there are four lifelines given in the book. Uh, the four lifelines include, you know, slim and fit. Slim, not only slim, slim and fit. And what to eat, when to eat and how much to eat. 
So that is your second life. And third is a restorative sleep. Restorative. When you get up in the morning, oh, you are a king or a queen. And a very good dinacharya, your regulated life. And fourth lifeline, if at all to be used. Lifeline, Amitabh Bachchan aate the, first Aye. life, second lifeline, third Aye. lifeline is medicines. So never try and go for fourth lifeline. Use three lifelines judiciously. Don't Aye. let them fit. And then I think the book and the purpose of the book on your body, you will not need a doctor. Your children will need a doctor and grandchildren will be proud of such parents. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. When it comes to connecting with my own body, there is something that I have discovered over the years, and it's called a gratitude journal. So in the same way that we give gratitude to our family or to our friends or to our salaries, I like to give gratitude to my various organs. And this week, I'm giving gratitude to my gallbladder, because I realized that the reason I can have pizza and uh, cheese and paratha with the requisite 50 grams of butter is because of this silent little organ that stores the bile needed for digesting fat. And it's hard working and it's keeping me alive. And it's a bit like how we pay gratitude to doctors or to, you know, defense personnel or to teachers we know we can't see them but we know that they're out there you know helping humanity and it's the same with my organs I can't see them but I know that they're there and I know they're working to give me everything I have so I feel more connected and then I feel every time I'm having too much of fat or too much of something I actually feel like I've almost humanized my organ and my gallbladder is screeching or my liver is weeping. And that helps me sort of say no to the next jalebi. How do you stay connected to your body? Please do write to us. We are available on pods at indiatoday.com or you can message us on 859-88-9966. And if you enjoyed this podcast then and you learned something from it, please leave a rating for us. We are there on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube Music.